one thing that you would say is, what's the bit of advice that you would give them? Like, if I constantly make mistakes, did you make a mistake? As far as social media? Yeah. Did you of make a course. mistake? How did you recover? Help um, me out. You got, like Jay-Z said, you got to bounce <laughs> back like round ball. Um, All right. Yeah, some of the mistakes was uh, early on in Instagram, it was just a fun platform. So I was doing silly stuff on it. And I was making jokes about stuff that probably wasn't funny to a lot of people, but it was funny Fair. definitely to me. Mm -hmm. And so I was expressing that. And then I had to realize, like, this could be greater than just being a joking platform. Welcome to Coffee Talk, our new video series where we sit down with experts to find inspiration and guidance about the biggest pain points in the industry. Before I introduce you to my very special guest, I want you guys to know you will be receiving a survey by the end of this Coffee Talk that will enter you in to win some popular nobody gear. There's nothing better than swag. So John Mosley, aka Popular Nobody, is actually one of the leading industry barbers. He was actually named Modern Salon's Top 100. He actually wrote the Paul Mitchell Barbering Program. You guys have probably seen some of his work on Rihanna and Eminem's tour. His work was also showcased in GQ, Vogue, Reebok, Adidas. The list goes on forever. <laughs> um, and he's also the national director of a barbering union, yeah. which actually assists barbers with or anybody in the industry that holds a license. Yeah, anybody that holds a current relevant license. Did I miss anything? That's a really long list. You've been super busy. Yeah, that's what it's supposed to be. You're supposed to be busy. You're supposed to be busy? If you're not busy, I wouldn't be sitting with, next to you right now. I don't know if my bio is that long. It's, it's going to get there. It's going to get there? Yeah, it just Okay, I'm going to put this on my, uh, my bio by the end of this. That's it. That's all you need. That's all I One need? One coffee talk. We're gonna... One coffee talk? All right, sounds good. Did I miss anything? I think you hit all the key points and, you know, that's, I, I think you did amazing already. Oh, thank you. Yeah, all right. <laughs> so one of the things that struck me, and it was one of the things that I thought about a lot, why barbering? Why barbering? That's funny. My whole family's in the industry. So from my mother to my sisters to aunts to cousins, like, that's what we do. It's like we have the hair family. And so um, for me, it was key to do something different. I didn't want to be a barber. I didn't want to be a hairstylist. Like it was punishment for me to go to my mom's salon on the weekend. So I hated it actually. And I was playing college football and there was a guy that was like playing in the same position I was. He was 25 years old, just got out of the Coast Guard and he had a wife and two kids already. And he thought he was going to make it to the NFL. I looked at him and was like, brother, this is not going to be my dreams and goals. <laughs> so I dropped out of college and told my mother I wanted to become a barber. And it was a joke to figure out how to get more time and to figure out what else I wanted to do. And then I fell in love with it and I thank my mother every day for it. So this wasn't the end game. This no, just this happened was, to be the end game. This was the joke game. <laughs> and All I right. turned it to end game. All right. Yeah. Very nice. Very nice. So I know that we're going to be talking a lot about social media today. And one of my big questions that I always worry about is, yes, we refer to you as John Mosley, but like right. we said, AKA popular nobody. Where did popular nobody come from? I started out in the industry with the Barber JM, and then I realized, like, I can't grow from that. That's going to put me in a box. So even on social media now, when I see guys marking themselves as the barber this, the barber that, color this or color that, mm. you put yourself in a box. There's no room to grow from that point. And so one day I was talking to one of my clients, and similar like you, he was like, yo, your work is everywhere. Like, where haven't you touched? Yeah. And then he was like, you're kind of like a popular nobody. And then from that day forward, I was like, I like it. So I always got to give him credit because he was the one that created the idea and I just ran with it. But he, he, he was like, you can have it, it's yours. And that's how it happened from a behind the chair standpoint. Nice, still a long time client? Yeah, no, nah, he moved, but we still keep up with each other. He probably watching now. That's awesome. It's, uh, he always Hi. Yeah, he's, what up, dog? <laughs> I gave you a shout out, I give you credit, don't come after me. Very nice. <laughs> so I know that, like I said to you before, when you came in and I gave him a big hug, um, you're all over the place. So with most favorite platform and why? For me, my favorite platform right now is Instagram. 
you know, if you work it to your capabilities, you could do live in there, you could do, you know, the story, and then you could just put up photos. And for me, I, I tell my Instagram different ways. I show you my personality through my story. Then I show you more personality when I go live and having fun. Sometimes it might be business stuff like today behind the scene at Coffee Talk. But then other days it might just be me clowning around. And then on my photos, you're going to get inspiration, you're going to get education, and you're going to get what I do, and that's cutting hair. And so that's the way I kind of tell my Instagram. So that's why I kind of like Instagram the most okay. because you can do so much and capitalize so much off of one platform. Nice. So for any of the people here that are watching today that are in the industry, right, for prime example, I want to be Instagram famous, just <laughs> going to put that out there. Okay. What is one thing that you would say is, What's the bit of advice that you would give them? Like, if I constantly make mistakes, did you make a mistake? As far as social media? Yeah. Did you of make course. a mistake? How did you recover? Help um, me out. You got, like Jay Z said, you got to bounce <laughs> back like round ball. Um, All right. Yeah, some of the mistakes was uh, early on in Instagram, it was just a fun platform. So I was doing silly stuff on it. And I was making jokes about stuff that probably wasn't funny to a lot of people, but it was funny Fair. definitely to me. Mm -hmm. And so I was expressing that. And then I had to realize, like, this could be greater than just being a joking platform. And so then I kind of switched it up. And then I did the same things. Like, I was promoting my classes a lot, like shooting flyers up and showing my face on flyers. And it was like, those wasn't getting likes. Those wasn't getting hits. So then I actually researched and found someone who was actually uh, worked for Instagram. And oh, wow. I, yeah, you know, you got to talk to people and so he talked to me and he was like let's get on the phone one day and he broke me down on instagram for an hour and he just helped me see things totally different so now you don't see me posting flyers on my instagram anymore because people don't want to see that yeah. you know i give you a great balance i'm very balanced on instagram from the inspiration to the work to the balance of being able to show being a father being you know a husband or being whatever and i showed that and that helped with that. So now I'm telling you the story through everyday posts. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. So what is one thing that you can say to someone who's in the industry about the mistakes that they're making on Instagram? Mm -hmm. How can they fix them? Right? Because I know that you are, you have a very unique brand. And I'm going to get to that in a second, <laughs> right? Because when I look at your Instagram and a lot of questions that were asked of me, because I know that you were in California yesterday yes. and one of your students actually instant message and said oh my god I remember meeting you at a show ask him that why are all his pictures the same like why are they all black and white so what are the mistakes because for her you know she's making mistakes she didn't get a chance to ask you she was in your class so right. if there's mistakes that are being made how do they correct them you simple just go back and uh, assess your Instagram page. You want to assess it by looking at what gets the most likes, what doesn't get the most likes, what's getting the most comments. All of those things are key things that you got to look to. And then once you figure that out, then you know what, what your following wants to see from you. And then you have to build that content off of what your following wants to see. I think a lot of times some people don't even analyze what they're posting to mm -hmm. see what is getting hits and what's not getting hits. Now, when I post something, I don't take it down. Like, it's just what it is. And that's the whole concept of posting with purpose. I posted that picture for a purpose. I posted it for a reason. So I'm not taking it down. And I'm going to just let it run the numbers if it runs. If it doesn't get as many likes, it doesn't matter. It's the content I felt. And that's coming from, like, being an artist standpoint. Like, nobody tell you how to paint your picture. So, you know, paint your picture on your Instagram the way you want it to be painted. Very nice. So is there a reason why, when we look at your Instagram, that everything is either black, gray, and a little bit of gold? What's the <laughs> method to that madness? Uh, gold is royalty. I mean, I, I, I could definitely get down with that. You ain't got no gold on. Uh, you, I see you popping I got, a little bit. I got my bit. little bling on. You know, I see. <laughs> um, but gold, gold is a bold statement. Gold is saying, like, I'm solid. You know, mm. for me, that's what it means. Like, gold is saying, I'm solid and I'm comfortable. You know, I'm comfortable in who I am, and it's a bold statement. And then black and white is even bolder because actually black and white show more flaws, and you can't hide in black and white. Mm. But then from a, a, a marketing standpoint, when you post a picture that has color in it, sometimes the actual image and the content gets 
washed out because of everything happening in the background. But if you turn the picture black and white, you're showing your flaws, but then you're also making a picture timeless because there's no date to the colors behind it. I would have never thought of that. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta stay, you gotta, you gotta keep that mind sharp. For real. I'm gonna sip some coffee for that. Uh, yeah, you know we need I mean? to drink some coffee yeah, to that. Cheers to that. Yeah, I like that one. My entire Instagram now is gonna be black and white, just so no, you know. No, okay. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Now I'm gonna charge you. <laughs> <laughs> now you go pay. So let me ask you this, because I know that you're large in the social media world. You have almost close to 50K followers now. Yeah. I'm close to it. I'm, I'm almost there. Almost there. Maybe today. Y'all help me out. Yeah, everybody go to his to, page. Yeah, follow. Popular nobody. Go like it. Go follow it, yeah. right? Um, where do you think that the future of social media is going? I think, uh, honestly, like companies like you guys with the software updates that you guys have for your software and stuff like that, it's going to be a company like you guys that create the next platform. You know, I think something is already being worked on to take over, you think about it, go back to MySpace. That's right. Go back to Facebook. At first, Facebook, you couldn't have a Facebook if you didn't have a college email address. Yep. So everything is changing over. So to me, I think something is gonna happen. That's why Instagram was so smart with buying all their other competitors and buying into them so that they could control the market for now. But it's somebody sitting at home right now designing something that's gonna be the next wave. and. I don't know what that wave is going to be, but it, it's something that's going to come and we're going to be like, oh, Snapchat thought they did it for a little bit and then mm, Instagram right. added stories. And then that's like, take it away. And then Facebook did stories too. There it is. And now Instagram went live, Facebook went live. So it's just a who everybody is going to create something. And when it happens, I hope everybody ready and jump on board. Oh, I, I'm, I'm going to get ready. You're going to get ready? Yeah. Everybody um, out there better get ready. They get ready. Right. So what would you say is the most powerful tool when it comes to social media? What is the most powerful tool? For me, speaking on, on my Instagram, um, I would say it's the content, the clarity of my photos, and, and the message behind the content. You know, if you, a lot of people don't like to read, so I don't, a lot of times I don't jumble a bunch of words inside my comment. Sometimes it's short, sweet, and to a point. Huh. And then people quick to read that and they can get it and they don't mind reading it. But then if you put a long message out, somebody will read it then because now they know it's something important because you're normally putting short captions up. But now this is a long one. They want to read what you're talking about because it's not normal for your normal post. So for me, it's having that great content, but also having a great caption to go with the content. Nice. So for... Some of the viewers that are out there, um, what is one thing that you would say? Because I know, like we said, that you have roughly almost close to 50K followers. We're we just going to say we're going to have 50,000 after this. We're going to have 51 after, after this. After we finish with our coffee, we should be right at 50. <laughs> Perfect. How do you find yourself turning those followers into clients? Because ultimately, right, when, we, when we're talking to everybody today, we're saying social media is this great platform. Right, you can cultivate your brands, make sure that you're doing X, Y, and Z. I can have all these people follow me, right, with purpose, of course, right, because I know all about the spamming, yeah. right? I've tried that. <laughs> it's not very successful. Um, or buying followers. Or buying followers. Yeah. I'm not going to do that. But um, how can we make sure that when we're doing all of the things that you're mentioning to us, right, as all these really great practices, how can they turn those followers into clients? And have you found that for yourself? Yeah, a lot of my followers, they either... They either follow me before, because of the inspiration, they follow me because they want to get a haircut, or they just follow me because they like my personality. And so for me, I, I, I pay attention to that. So when I'm behind the chair, I don't mind going live with a client and letting my client get their 30 minutes to shine on my Instagram because it shows character. It shows that you're helping build other people as well. So that client to stylish relationship, you got to have that. Have fun with your clients. You know, let them get on your Instagram. You get on there, it's clowning around. That's going to keep people coming in. I think Apple has done a great job with creating a, a program or a bunch of electronics that all link together, but it keeps you tied by one emotion. That phone is your best friend, and they know that. So when I teach, I tell people, don't sell haircuts. Sell the emotion that comes with sitting in that seat. If somebody's having a bad day, sell that. Let them have fun. Like talk to them. 
And that's what it takes. So for me to turn my followers over into clients, it's not a hard transition because I post enough content where people know I'm everywhere. You know, I Ain't post. In, yeah, I post in airports. <laughs> you know, I tag airports, whatever city I'm in, I'm tagging. You know, if I know a celebrity in that area, I'm going right into his DM. I just DM Justin Timberlake the other day because what? I don't know him, but I said no disrespect to whoever you have cutting your hair. I just feel like I'm a personal fit for you because of your versatility and because what I'm versatile at doing in my career. So I attack like that. And people follow the brand too. So people follow me in multiple ways. Either you're gonna get the haircut or you wanna buy the merch. Or you wanna come see me teach. Yeah. So it's like being able to have all those fishing poles in the water that lead back to one platform. Nice. So one thing that I heard you mention in that answer is teaching. So I know that you wrote Paul Mitchell's barbering program um, I know that I see you post a lot of their content, right? I just saw that you were out there in California yeah. teaching a class. How many classes do you teach? It's funny. I'm actually the lead, lead educator for Hattori Hanzo Shears. Nice. And so with Hanzo, I'm doing about 30 classes a month all over the states. And um, So when do you get time to put things on social media? Because you're so active. A lot of times I use photos, like right after a class, I'll jump on Instagram, going to the next location, and I'll check my hashtag. Hashtag popular nobody, by the way. Everybody use it today. Yeah, that hashtag it or John Mosley. If you take pictures <laughs> of us today, hashtag it so we can find it because sometimes <laughs> that's where I get a lot of my content from. Nice. I'll use the stuff that people took in my class and I'll screenshot it and then save it. And then I'll repost Very it. Very smart. So I, I let other people help me build content for myself. And then I have quality content of my own personal stuff. Wow. Wow. <laughs> so for anybody that's out there that's trying to organically grow their social media, uh, what's one bit of advice that you would give them? Um, to organically grow your followers, you, yeah. have to, you have to talk to people. Okay. So engage. Engage. Like you can't post a photo and then run from the comments like that's normally want, what i do yeah you can't do that you got to talk to them you got to engage you got to talk because a lot of people want other companies to sponsor them and stuff like that but you look at their instagram and they have questions like what tools are you using what hairspray are you using but then they never get back to the people so for me i felt like you know that was something that i always wanted to do was connect back to my social media following so I answer questions. I'll get on and go live and answer and talk to people. And you have to do that. You just can't make a post and say, oh, I'm cocky. I posted this cool. It's going to do what it do. No, talk to the people. And that's how you engage the people to come back to your page and keep talking to you and wanting to engage with you more. That's how you build the support off of social media that put bodies in your seat, mm -hmm. but then also allow you to upgrade sales in the salon. Interesting. Interesting. So with social media now in play right mm -hmm. i always hear from certain salons that i visit being here in the education department right they say i have a full business i have a whole brand and a culture that i'm you know <laughs> i'm constantly building for myself social media or creating a blog just seems like an extra job so how do you balance that with every your busy schedule because clearly by your bio whew, the list continues to go on and on right it is an extra job, but everybody wants extra money, but they don't want to put the extra work <laughs> in to get the extra money. So it's work. Yeah, it's work. And uh, for salon owners, I would recommend you getting somebody young that's at a photography school or whatever and just hiring them to come shoot content for your staff a um, couple days out of the week and have them have that content ready for your staff. You know, um, that's one great way to do it. Another great way is teamwork. Inside your salon or inside your barbershop, have your teammates help you out, build that content, go live from there, you know, or, you know, take photos for each other. You know, don't just wait till you finish the client and take the client to the ring light and then take a picture. That's what everybody's doing. Get out of the norm, switch it up, like become a team, help each other out. Becoming and, a, little, a little unique. Yeah. All right. But salon owners, I think it's really helpful if you hire someone to come in and take photos of your staff and celebrate your staff and, you know, uplift your staff to, you know, help them out on social media. Perfect. 
So we've spoken about a lot of things when it comes to social media and all the different things like cultivating a brand, making sure that I'm posting with purpose, right? What is the one thing that you think that if anybody watching today, what's the one thing that they should take back with them regarding their social media platforms, whether it's Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat? Consistency. Consistency? Consistency. If you're going to do it, you got to do it to the fullest. You got to work. I edit my own videos a lot of times. I shoot my own videos a lot of time. Um, you know, my own photos. I do everything. And I learned that because I wanted to be successful with them in myself. And so now when I go to hire somebody else to do it, I know how long it should take you to do a two minute video with the content that I give you. I know those type of things. So it's a business and you got to run it like it's a business. But if you don't know any aspect of what you're trying to do, people are going to get you for all the money that they could get you for because you don't know. And That's so for true. me, it's like be consistent, learn your stuff and be consistent. Post, po if you're going to post black and white, stay there. If you're going to post, you know, black and color, stay there. Like whatever you're going to do, give your page a theme and stay consistent with that theme and trust the process, trust the journey. Don't change your name, you know. Midway through. Midway through, don't change your <laughs> name. Stay consistent because people that follow you already, when they see your name change, they don't know who you are no more. So they unfollow you thinking that how did this person get here? Huh. So, you know, you got to stay familiar to the people. I have not changed my icon picture. My icon really? picture is the same picture. You know, the people get familiar with things. Hmm. So you got to stay consistent at what you do so that people want to stay consistent with you. So I know that we talked about making sure that we post with purpose, mm -hmm. but are there best times to post? I, I, me personally, I don't say it's the best time. I say all the time is the best time. Okay. You have all the time in the world, 24 hours a day. Instagram don't sleep. The world, they this don't is sleep. true. So for me, I, I like to post three or four times a day. And I'll go, I'll go, you know, story, and then I'll give you four posts throughout the day. But that's me building content and having the content. So everybody watching, you have to build your content up to where you can post four times a day. You have to create a hashtag that people want to create a movement with you and follow that movement so then that you could go there and post from the hashtag that other people are tagging you in. Stuff like that is going to help you build that content to where you could constantly drive four or five times a day. Like that's my average, three or four times a day. And when I stay consistent at that, I, I, took, I took like two weeks off for Christmas and New Year's because it was like, you know, it's family time. Yeah. I took that time off too because my Instagram is a job. So I took it off. And my followers stopped. My activity stopped. Wow. But then when I got right back to it, come January 3rd. They kept coming in. I gained 500 followers in a week. Sean, 500 <laughs> followers. Yeah. Do you know what I could do with 500 followers? I'm going to tell you the secret how to do it. Are we drinking to the, the secret? Yeah, this is the okay. secret. You gotta drink We're drinking to, to a secret. Everybody pay attention. There's a secret. When you post your work and then post your inspiration. So many people in the world need inspiration. So they're more likely to tag other people in it that might be going through some stuff too. So that person's gonna follow you because they friend valued what you posted. And that's how then that turns into money because they're gonna come wanna sit in your chair to be around such an inspirational person. Because sometimes Groups of people have so much negativity around them, they're looking for that one outlet that could be that positive influence. So for me, that's why you see one of my posts is always going to be, out of that four or five, inspiration. Wow. Yeah, well, you always think about your barber or your hairstylist. That's your therapist. So that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Huh. I hope everybody got that. <laughs> Rewind it is recording this because that's a really good one. Yeah. That's a very good one. So... With that being said, I know that um, one of the questions that I had personally had gotten from one of the girls here who has her own photography program, one of the questions I know that she had was, is there something that you specifically use when you edit your pictures? Because again, you have such a unique brand, right? You say that you spend all of this time, you're taking, you're posting four pictures a day. What are you using as that tool? Instagram. Instagram. You just use the Instagram, Instagram filters. Instagram, Inkwell, black and white. That's it. 
That's it? That's it. Huh. Yeah, you, like I, I tell people all the time, you don't have to, so many people are running out buying expensive cameras and doing all of this. If you got a Samsung or an iPhone, yeah. you got a nice camera right there in your hand. You just need to learn lighting a little bit to learn how to stand and position yourself. Tell a friend to grab their phone and put their phone up to give you a little extra lighting or something. And you can still get great, great content from that. And so that's what I use. I, I use Instagram, Inkwell, and it's probably a few people that have been around me that know that I'm telling the truth because I show them how I do it. Interesting. Maybe we'll go, maybe we'll go live on that later and I'll show, show the world how I edit a photo inside of Instagram. I would love that. You would? I'm sure they would love it too. That's a little behind the scenes. Check us that's, out later. Yeah, you're going to have to check that out on Popular Nobody, right? Yeah. There you go. We're going to do that as a story, right? We're going to engage. Yep. Perfect. So um, I know that we had some questions that are coming in from all different platforms. So one of the questions that we had was, what have you found is the most successful hashtags, location tags? If you can mention any other ones that maybe I'm not thinking of. But I know that that was a question that we uh, had gotten from one of the viewers. So it's different. When you're, when you're looking at hashtags, you want to hashtag your area. What's relevant to your area? Because that's where you're going to get the money from. But then you're tagging American Salon, Modern Salon, you guys, Speak Millennium. You're tagging all the businesses that you want to see your work to, hopefully to get attention on their platform. So when you hashtag, you hashtag for your area, and when you tag on your photo, you're tagging for business. If that okay. makes if that no, makes it sense. does make sense because when I look at your social media platform, I see that you tend to hashtag the same things, but there's always some unique ones. You can tell I did my homework, right? Yeah, yeah. Right. I always see the John Mosley hashtag, the popular nobody hashtag, but then ever so often you see some others. I guess now saying based off of where you are, yep. right? Is there ever too many hashtags? Because I do see, like, I could look at some people's platforms and it's like hashtag happy, then they hide some inside of a comment. Yeah, for me, I, 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 it's rare that you'll get me hashtagging inside of a comment. Okay. Normally, I leave the caption and then the next comment is a whole nother comment of hashtags okay. so that your photo stays clean, that your page stay clean. When somebody clicked my photo, you want to see the caption only. And then they hit the comment and there's all my hashtags because that hashtag is still connected to the photo. It's just hidden. So if somebody, once you hit like, what, eight comments, the other comments drop off. Drop off, yeah. So it's hidden at that point. So you don't see 30,000 hashtags on my photos. They're all hidden. Interesting. And of course, you know, I tell people all the time, the most important word in the English language is your name. So your name should automatically be a hashtag. Your salon your brand should automatically be a hashtag. And then everything else is what you cater to around your area. Interesting. Now I know that too with social media, they have ways where you can like put the dots, the five dots, and that automatically hides after I put in one comment. Would you recommend that to the salons or even tagging particular different companies? Like today, like, or on my page, right? When I post a picture, when I do my makeup, I'll like tash, tag the uh, eyelash company that I use. Of course. You want them to see that you're using their product. You're right. trying to get some stuff. Right. So would you suggest that clients do the same? Like if, if I'm someone who's watching today who owns a salon, would you suggest that my clients tag me? Yeah. And, and what I would do too from, uh, once again, going back to salon owners and stylists in these salons or barbershops, if you know your client is selfie happy, take the picture <laughs> for them but take it on your phone and then tell them you'll send it to them. And the reason why you do that is so once you post it, they post it now, that's the same photo getting circulated on this one platform. They hashtag it right, you hashtag it right, there's more visibility going out. So you wanna be able to attack the market that way and then you don't get the client that goes sit in the car and move their bangs away from the way that you put it. You have the photo, the original photo of how it should look. And then it not also being airbrushed. Yeah. I, where I, your teeth look like they're glowing. Right. Or your hairline as a guy looked like <laughs> it was painted on by the man upstairs himself. <laughs> That's a lot of stuff going on right now. Photoshopping and a lot of fibering and painting 
you know, that's our industry right now. Yes, I, I'm not going to lie. I'm a little bit guilty of the airbrush. Oh, the airbrush filter? The airbrush filter is a I'm beautiful thing. I'm going to drink to that because that's drink. hard to swallow, so I need to. <laughs> so what would you say your social media goals for 2018 are? Um, my goals for social media 2018 is continue to put dope content out. Continue to, you know, stay who I am, stay true. Not changing who I am because of what everybody else is doing. Making people adapt to what I'm doing. Um, growing more, doing more stuff like this. I feel like, you know, a lot of times people don't really see my personality as much because I am so business oriented. So stuff like this, you get to see it. You know, I'm just about to, to say. Yeah, like stuff like this, you get to see it. And so for 2018, I want to do more lives, more, you know, public speaking, more, you know, Q&A sessions and things like that on social platforms that help expand other people's social media. Well, I will say this, even though you mentioned, right, you're very business, not a lot of people know my personality. I will personally speak for John on this one. John visited us last year, right? We introduced you to our Millennium Experience. Yes. And that's where I had the opportunity of meeting John. So much for business. This man is amazing. What do you mean? Business? I got to, get, I got to know you in such a short time just from teaching yeah. a class and being there for a day. Your personality comes through. Yeah, when I'm like in situations like that, I'm like, well, of course. That's just me. I'm in my element. I have fun in my element. And so that's, but it's not often you see that because you don't see it on film. You got to be there in person to experience. And so for me, I want to showcase it more. So I want to do more. So I've reached out to a couple of TV networks to show like what I do behind the scene because I make it look easy. Like being in California yesterday and then making it here in a, a possible snowstorm. To get here. Yeah, we you appreciate guys, that. Yeah, you guys were sweating <laughs> bullets, but I was like, man, I got this. <laughs> you know, so it's like that kind of stuff I want to show because people just think it's an easy thing to do. And it's like doing four classes in California in one day and then hopping on a flight. Like my last class finished at 9 p.m. and my flight was at 10.55. And it was a 30-minute drive from... Oh, wow. So that hustle, that, that movement, people need to see that from me. Because they, they just look at it like, oh, your job's so fun and easy. I'm like, bro, I make it look fun and easy through Instagram. But as a lot of times, I'm sweating bullets. <laughs> You're making it work, though. <laughs> yeah, I'd already figured out like how I was going to get here from Charlotte if it was a snow situation. I had already mapped my plan out. I always you were going to hike it. I was going to get a ride. <laughs> I was going to make it happen. You were going to be here for all of them. For you, I was going to do whatever. It's, he was going to be if here. If I had to Uber, I would Uber. <laughs> I'm Perfect. Good. Perfect. So, um, what would you say is your most favorite Instagram account you follow? Besides me, of course. Uh, definitely you guys. Um, I'm silly, so I follow a lot of like silly stuff. Like, I can't say that on. What do you mean uh, you can't say that? I, well, I guess I can. Let me drink before drink I say it. it yeah. right. I don't think, did they spike ours a little bit? No, nah, I'm good. I don't drink, so I'm good. Okay. I followed, uh, I follow like Slut Whisper, <laughs> like just it. because it's funny. Like that's like <laughs> comedy. Um, ha Ha Davis on Instagram, I follow him because he's funny. Like I like following like comical stuff because sometimes I feel like the, you know, everyday life is so serious. Like that's what I do at night. I lay my bed and watch Instagram like comedy videos just to get my day because a lot of times I use that as content going into my next class the next day or the next speaking event and just tell stories about what I watched and experienced the night before because it makes people laugh. And so that's what I like to do. Very nice. And Very of course nice. I follow my team. Everybody on my team I follow. Team popular, nobody, you gotta follow that. Who else do you follow? Uh, I like, I follow Kobe, even though he don't post much, but he great. American Salon. Uh, oh, you, want, you want me to say you? She's still waiting for a shout out. Oh. <laughs> that she. <laughs> strokes her hair <laughs> you absolutely know? absolutely so yeah I follow, I follow stuff like that very nice very nice so I don't know let me double check and see if we have any questions that are coming in I know that some questions were coming in through some different platforms because I know that uh, American Salon is also putting this on their Facebook Live. Oh, I feel special. You're all over. I get American Salon. I get speak my land. I'm getting you get coffee. It. You get, yeah, coffee. Ooh. You get it all. You get it all. So we're kind of doing that tagging thing that you were talking about. 
you gave it to us, we gave it to American, we're putting it on Speak, they've got it on Facebook. See, we, we already took all of your advice before you even said it. That's what I'm talking about. At least, it, and it, honestly, it must be working. Right? I heard we got some good numbers going right now. Plus, so. we got you here. Yeah, I don't know how that worked. I don't know how we made this happen. We made this happen. All of the, uh, the TME. The Millennium Experience. This is how this happened. That's how that's how it started. That's how it started. I that's where in, the journey was. I walked in as a nobody in there. And yeah. And then I came out a popular nobody. nobody. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so just if you could for me wrap up for me, um, and just for me for this sake, just for everybody watching, just name three things for me that everybody can take back with them today to make sure that they can one get all of their followers, turn them into clients, right? What is the most important thing for my brand, right? Anything that you think is gonna be that one big powerful tool that I can bring back with me, that, or I can take from this. Um, like I said, that key word, consistent. Staying consistent um, when it comes to being, you know, uh, create your hashtag so that you create your own movement on Instagram where other people wanna use your hashtag to build that up as well. Um, and just be you. Be you on social media. Don't hide behind the camera and act like you're something you're not. Like, it's so much easier to be you on social media than it is to be fake. Because once people figure out that you're not being you on social media, they don't believe in you no more. So and, and be you. Use it to the right platform. Like, we have this platform now as an artist. And, you know, social media has given the hair world such a big platform. So it's like be you as an artist and enjoy being that artist, but then share it with the world. And that's through hashtagging who you are and create that movement, stand consistent and then make yourself a theme on your page. Have a theme to to give yourself a little structure to follow. Perfect. Well, I think I think I, I don't know if I could take any more. I mean, by the end of this, I know I'm going to be Instagram famous. Yeah, by we done. You did it already. Right. We're going to be, I'm going to be amazing with all of your advice. And I know everybody else out there too, probably greatly appreciated everything. They're all going to be Insta famous as well. Right. So I just want to go ahead and thank everybody for joining us today. And John, thank you so much for being here with us. Thanks for having me. Thanks for having me. And everybody watching, thank you guys. Uh, make sure that you stay tuned. Go to Speak Millennium hashtag so, and, and the page so that you can see the swag that we're giving out. And make sure to continue to follow, continue to, you know, do what you do on social media. Salon owners, this is up to you. This company brought this to you guys for what you do for them. So give back to them as well. Just hang withdraw. You got a deposit. Wonderful. So guys, again, thank you so much for joining us. Make sure to fill out that quick survey like John had mentioned to get yourself with some popular nobody swag. And make sure to join us next month on February 12th. We're going to be sitting down with Susie Trial, and she's going to show us how to conquer our business culture. See you guys next time.